Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create your own extension for Chrome. So it's actually a lot easier than you might suspect. In order to create one, you just need knowledge of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So before this tutorial, I created a fairly straightforward one. So it's a random quotes extension, which when you click on it, displays at random an inspirational quote. So I'll be using this as an example in this tutorial, but in terms of creating your own extension, you can pretty much create anything that you're able to in the browser with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, so now I'll walk you through the steps you need to follow to be able to create your own extension. Okay, so it's in this Chrome extension folder where the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that I'm using for my random quotes extension are located and you structure it in exactly the same way as if you were creating an app to be displayed in the browser. So if we take a look at the output of index.html, you see it looks just like it does in the extension, except we're running it on a browser page. Okay, so for this app, the important elements in the markup are this one with the ID of quote and the one with the ID of person because it's into those elements that I am inserting the content, the quote, and the person who said it in my script. If I go to the top here, so you see here that I've got an array of objects. Each object has a property quote and author. So this is where I'm getting the data from. For my app, you could be making a fetch request here and getting the data from an API. But in order to make this as future-proof as possible, just in case the API isn't working, at the time that you watch this video, I prefer to use some hard-coded data. Now, after creating the data, I select the quote and the person elements, and then I run this function set quote. So what I'm doing here is generating a random number that corresponds to the index values of the objects in the quotes array. And then I'm using that value to select one of the objects from the quotes array and I want to get the property quote and author from that and then I'm writing those into their respective elements in the DOM. And then after doing that, I'm storing the value of index in local storage. So you have access to local storage when you are creating an extension. And the reason I'm doing that is because the next time the function runs, I'm checking the value of local storage. And if I've generated an index value, that's the same as the last one. I run the set quote function again in a recursive way, so I don't end up repeating the same quote twice in a row. So the only other part of this app that you haven't seen yet is the CSS file. So this is fairly straightforward. I'm importing the Roboto font from Google Fonts. I'm setting the background color of the entire container and the color of the text contrast against it with white smoke. Then I'm setting the Roboto font Importantly, I'm setting the minimum width of block quote to 300 pixels so that the quote doesn't end up getting really squashed. And I'm making the block quote text slightly larger than the person who made the quote. So at the moment, this is just like a regular app that you would run in the browser. So how do you turn it into a Google Chrome extension? So what you need to do is to add a file in the root of your folder called manifest.json. So it needs to actually be called manifest.json. So in here, you want to set some metadata about the app you have just created. So you can find detailed instructions on how to do that on the Chrome developers website. So there are some required metadata that you need to include. So I'm just going to copy that in. So there's no comments in JSON. So I'll remove that or trailing comma. So the version is three. That's the latest version of manifest. The name of the extension. So you need to include that and a version. So this is usually, if it's the first version, 1.0.0. Okay, now I'm going to add some more data there because what I want to happen is, as you saw, when I click on the quote extension, it should pop up. So to set a pop-up to appear, 
you want to include an action property in your manifest.json file. And the important bit is you want to include this default pop-up here and you want to set the value of this property to its pop-up.html. We need to set it to index.html. So I'm going to copy this over now. So this action, all of the properties here are nested inside it. I'll delete the default icon so you can add a custom icon to your extension if you like. I'm just going to be using the default icon that Chrome will provide. So the default title, I'll say random inspirational quotes. And I need to set the default pop-up to the HTML file that I created. So no trading comma in JSON there. Now there's a lot more properties you can set in a manifest JSON file than I'm setting here. And I'm just setting a minimal number here so that I can get this extension working. I don't have any intention of publishing it, so I'm not going to include more metadata. But if you do want to publish an extension, then you probably want to include a lot more metadata that is included on this page. Now, believe it or not, on the coding side, this is all you need to do to create a functional extension that works in Chrome. All you need to do now is to import it. So you can do that by clicking on this three dots drop down menu here, going to more tools, extensions, and you want to turn on developer mode here, first of all, and then load your extension. So it's going to be the folder where your app is located. Once you've done that, you can access your extension in the browser. So if I click on this now, you see an inspirational quote has been displayed. So this is working, but it's only working in my browser. If you want to make it available on the Chrome store, then you have to go through some additional steps, such as signing up as a web store developer. So there's a registration fee there of $5, and then you need to basically zip up the file in the format that is recommended here. So you need to create a zip file containing your extension. As I mentioned, you need a developer account with the Chrome Web Store. Then you can upload your item and then basically it's a review process to decide whether your extension will be included in the Chrome Store. Once it's in the Chrome Store, it's available for anyone to download and start using in their own browser. So this is how you can create your own Chrome extension. As you've seen, if you've got a solid knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you have all the tools you need to get started making your own extensions. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.